Welcome back to this episode of Digitally. And we have a guest I know you've met before, Lake Dai. And if you didn't catch her um, episode last, the last episode, please make sure you do. You're going to really enjoy it. Lake was an operator. She, uh, uh, she was, I think, employee number 84 at Alibaba, head of product. She led the search team at Yahoo. She, uh, she's been part of the founding team, member of so many deep tech startups. Um, she's also a venture capitalist and an investor. She uh, is a partner at LDB Ventures, one of the ways I, she and I actually work together a little bit. And then she's an educator. She's an adjunct professor at uh, Carnegie Mellon. You can see the background or the backdrop behind her. Um, and she's really passionate about all three of those roles. But today I want to pick a fourth role that I think she's just been fun, f- fantastic at. And we'll, we'll unpeel that and we'll talk about that together. And maybe just to even tease out what she's doing there. She's on the board. She's on the advisory board of Women in Technology International. It's a global nonprofit organization that empowers women in business and tech. She's the chairwoman of HYSTA, which is a nonprofit organization empowering Chinese American entrepreneurs and leaders. And then she's also co-founder of Shinect. Shinect's a nonprofit accelerator for SaaS startups. And so you can see giving back to the community, being part of that environment is such an integral part of who you are, Lake. Thank you for everything you do. But Lake, let me just go back a little bit. How did you get to where you are today? Where did you grow up? How did you get into tech? Talk to us a little bit about that. Wow, that's a, that's a, that, that's a, I have a long answer for this question, but uh, so I grew up in China and then uh, grew up in an engineering family. So all my extended family members are either university faculties or they're engineering, aerospace engineers, and for example, mechanical engineering. So uh, I always, always developed the passion uh, for STEM. Um, so I, uh, and afterwards, and I think at the, the beginning of my career, actually, I went to an undergrad for econ and, and graduated, worked for Apple and product marketing. And I thought I'm going to continue to go with the marketing or product role. But then I just really love building product. So I switched the product uh, thanks to, you know, Jack Ma gave me opportunity and as had a product back then and uh, when the company was very small. And then uh, from there, and basically t- took the ride of internet waves and get exposure to tons of different internet products, uh, e-commerce, marketplace, search engine, advertising platform. Um, and then, you know, I start managing product uh, engineering teams, data science team. And the next thing I know, you know, <laughs> professor at CMU, and then also uh, got in Stanford for computer science. So all those different things, I feel like my, my STEM is the later part versus a lot of people start with computer science major and start, you know, working on product and business. And I did the reverse way. So, so that's, that's, I mean, that's amazing, right? But help us connect the dots from that experience and that background and such a high growth area in artificial intelligence mm. to gender diversity. Where, where do the two intersect and how did you take a, into a, take a passion for that? Oh, diversity. Um, well, so first of all, we all know that women in STEM is a smaller portion, right? Uh, there, there are fewer of us um, that decide to take this route. And then if you go into work, workplace, you can see that, you know, as you continue to, uh, to promote it over time, you can see less and less female in the leadership team. And I thought it was already represent very small portion. That's until I actually get into the VC business. And I find out that, you know, female GPs is less than 2% of the entire GP population. Um, and then I become a board of director and I find a board director is not even rare, right? So, uh, so that's when I decided, and you know, this is something that um, I, I know a lot of great people, a lot of great women that are fantastic leaders. And how do I create more opportunities for people like them uh, to have a, more visibilities and to be more successful? Uh, you know, either they're being founders or there are founding partners of VC firms or their board of directors. How do we work together to create this environment? Um, so about a year ago, I started this very casual community called Wonder Woman. Right? Wonder Woman. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I had a domain for wonderwoman.dev. So I said, well, okay, so we'll just use this name. Um, so there are people who are doing wonders. They, like I said, there are founding 
founding partners of law firms and VC firms or PE firms. And, and they are founders with over 50 million annual revenue. They are board of directors of public companies and uh, large private companies or very large nonprofit organizations. Now we, we, we really enjoy this kind of social, small, intimate uh, get together. And you, you think about this is actually ecosystem, right? So VC want to invest in founders and founders need the board directors. A lead investor also sometimes will help the company to find independent board directors. So this three part actually works really well together. Yeah. That's amazing. So, no, that, that's, that's easy to see. And, and, and by the way, your passion in this is so obvious. Um, but Lake, isn't a part of this also, it's great, it's, everything you said is fantastic, but isn't a part of this also that it's actually fundamentally good for AI, that the diversity actually makes the AI better in the long run. Talk to us a little bit about that piece of it. Women in AI. <laughs> well, okay. So uh, I think this is not even limited to AI, right? So if we think about, you know, in the product design, in the technology uh, development and to all the way, you know, investing or funding companies, you need some sort of a diversified and balanced view. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so for example, uh, I've seen a very famous consumer product company that have designed product and apparently it's meant for general population, but obviously didn't really consider the female special needs, right? So that just tells me they don't have somebody who have that kind of perspective in their product team. And same as technology, you know, we talk about AI here. Uh, in last episode, we talked about ground truth building. So you need to collect the right amount of data and write in high quality and try to drive that data uh, to, to, uh, to direct it into a very unbiased outcome, right? In order to do that, you need to have a good sample of data. And that needs to be some, you need to be very balanced point of view, right? Um, so I think uh, in this case that when we talk about AI, we cannot talk about AI without talking about building a model. We cannot talk about building a model without talking about building ground truths with the right set, set of data. And that's unbiased. Hopefully we'll try to do as much as we can to be unbiased and bring different balance view into this. And I think, uh, you know, either being uh, gender diversity or ethnic diversity or background or economic background or, or geo differences, right? So we all need to bring this different point of view um, so that can build a much better world. Yeah, I know it's uh, fantastic because I think what you're saying is in the long term, we build a much, much better world that we all live in together. But in the short term, it's about business competitiveness. It's about product com completion. It's about making a more competitive offering. It's about delivering value that is, uh, that is deeper and richer. Yeah. with the inputs of a diverse team that can actually affect it and apply it in different ways. And that's fantastic because the long-term return and there's a short-term obvious Yes, return. Yes, um, uh, what I don't want to do, for example, you know, when we talk about women on board uh, as one initiative, there are different organizations that try to do this. But I don't want to be saying, you have to have at least one board directors because you have to. And I want to talk to those uh, companies that look, how a diversified board can bring you to make much, much better business decisions. And that's, you know, that's a women's situation, right? That is exactly right. That's exactly right. Fantastic. And so if I, um, I guess, um, any words of wisdom for people that are aspiring to be in your shoes and look and do some of the things you've done, any, any inputs you would have, uh, what would you tell us? Um, well, first of all, I think I'm still learning. Uh, so, uh, I would say from my past experience, the one thing that I would, I found that really helpful is that do not let, do not put some of the, of the frames, uh, to put yourself in a box, uh, a box that to prevent you from, uh, pursuing something. Right. So, um, I mentioned that my undergrad was econ. So if I think my econ major cannot be computer science PhD, then I would never continue to do that. I would never think about how would econ major can be a CMU AI professor. Then I just ultimately limit what I can do, right? And the same thing is as a founder, if I think, well, I'm just doing being founder, I never thought of being VC because VC industry is really hard to penetrate into back then. Then I would not start working towards it. So I think 
there are uh, not not saying there is no glass ceiling. There's glass ceiling out there, and we all need to work together really hard to to remove it or at least make much much better. But in the meantime, there is also limitation that internally one may give yourself, right? So that's something that we have 100% control. So how do you build your confidence in yourself? And how do you see yourself? And then and be brave to pursue that what you want to do. And what's the worst case? You just don't, don't get it. If you don't ask, you don't get it, right? I love those words of wisdom. I mean, you're right. If you don't ask, you don't get it. If you don't uh, aim for it, you you know um, you won't. You definitely won't get it. So I love that. Thank you for sharing those words with us, uh, Lake. Um, you are an inspiration to many in your field. I've certainly enjoyed all the time I've spent with you, and I know my audience will really appreciate getting to know you as well. So thank you again, and uh, to my uh, to to everyone watching this. Thank you for participating. Yeah, thanks. For, uh, thank you for having me.